expression of those which are showing change. The evidence is so strong that the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, used a very, very unusual word for very careful scientists. They said warming of the earth is unequivocal. How do we trade off adaptation versus mitigation? In other words, just adjust to what we're going to get or try to prevent getting it. It's not a trade off. They're complements. They work together because it's already too late to prevent the 10 to 20 centimeters of sea level rise that we already have and the 50 more that we're going to get no matter what we do. It's already too late to prevent most of the melting of the Arctic sea ice, which is already. With regard to people who don't agree about climate change, every single excellent, legitimate climate scientist is a skeptic. We are skeptics because scientists are trained, and properly so, to question everything. The difference between a skeptic and a denier is that a skeptic admits when there's a preponderance of evidence, when the vast number of thermometers and the rising sea level and the multiple lines of evidence converge on a strong preponderance, as we now have, then you claim it is very likely that there is going to be change. Very likely doesn't mean it's 100% sure. Say only 95% sure. So when somebody says, oh, we're not sure, that's a fraudulent argument because you're never sure about Scientists love data. That way we can go and do an analysis of what happened and try to understand from looking at multiple collections of data how processes relate, how they're interacted, what cause and effect is. How much data is there on the future? Zero. Kyoto Treaty accomplished its mission if you look at the mission as a social experiment, it did not succeed if you consider its mission was to cut greenhouse gases now. Because Kyoto had two important underlying principles, both of which have now been accepted around the world, and that's the success part. Number one, no one country can solve this alone. And number two, some countries have a larger historic responsibility for how much they have emitted and therefore a larger responsibility to try to cure it. In that sense, Kyoto was a success because it taught the countries how to negotiate together, very unpleasantly, but how to negotiate together. It should be quicker to get an agreement the second time, but this agreement will have to be real in terms of cutting tons of carbon dioxide. I would not bet on one thing. My belief is that there are a hundred bright ideas out there. We have got to do a hundred things, and we have to let them sort out, let it figure out what can be done cost-effectively, socially acceptably, and environmentally safe. And I don't think we know the answer yet. The nuclear engineers have been working, and I believe that they have safer reactors than they used to have, that they have alternative methods for storage that will be more socially acceptable. There is still a very serious and real problem about proliferation. That's the biggest problem with nuclear. I do not think the biggest problem with nuclear is accidents. Uh, so nuclear will be a part of the solution, particularly in countries that already have nuclear weapons. But to spread to countries that don't have nuclear weapons, unless there's a strong international authority taking care of the radioactive materials, I don't think it's a very safe world solution. We not only have to predict how the climate's going to behave, but we have to predict how will the human learning curve change the cost of solar machines, which could radically change the outcome. If when the solar machines become as cheap as coal, there won't be any more coal. So to predict 2050, I would say there's a 10% chance that we're going to be pretty lucky, that we're going to be very clever and invent our way out of the problem, and that nature is going to be more resilient than we currently believe likely. So we could come out okay. And then I'd argue there's this 10% chance looming up here that nobody wants to think about, the oh my God chance. 
Can I tell you which one is more likely? My crystal ball is too cloudy for that. Um, if you put a gun at my head, convince me you're God and I have to guess, I'm going to guess we're going to probably come out in the middle to the upper middle.